test is valid just by looking at it? Well, you can get some idea on its face validity, but that doesn't really tell you if it's a test that will work. If it doesn't tell you if it's a test whose interpretation you, you can use in any way. Um, you, you can say what you think it's a test of, but uh, you can't go very much further than that. Well, how do you know what a test is measuring? That's probably one of the hardest questions. One of uh, my former students, Doug Stevenson, put it uh, quite simply a number of years ago, the easiest thing to do in the world is to make up a new test. The hardest thing, and we're still struggling with it, is to be sure exactly what a test is measuring, what it is that the test is getting at. How do you decide if the use or interpretation of a test is valid? If you had some reasonable idea what a test is measuring, if it's measuring more than the ability to answer the test, then you'd like to be able to say a person who can answer this kind of task, who can do this kind of thing, is likely to be able to do something else. For example, um, let's take uh, a test we argue about a lot, the close test. Now, the ability to answer a close test is very much like the ability to do a crossword puzzle. One of the big puzzles is uh, people who are good at doing that kind of test, good at doing anagrams, good at doing uh, crossword puzzles, does that mean they're good at language? How can one make a test more valid? By looking at the results of the test and comparing them with what happens afterwards. I mean, uh, let's say we're going to use a test to predict how well people are going to do in a, in a, in a university program. We give them the test, we see then what happens to them in the university program. Uh, we look at what happens after a year, we look at what happens after two years, um, and we have some idea then that that test is serving its purpose, and if it is, then we leave it as it is. If it's not, we come back and, uh, and try and improve it. How does one live with this uncertainty? That's the question that I think we should have been looking at more seriously for the last hundred years or so. We know that tests can never be accurate completely. We know that human language ability is too complex to be reduced to a single number. Uh, what we should have been looking at is how do we deal with that? How many times do we write? What's the risk of using the single number that a test usually provides uh, in, in order to make a decision about somebody's life or about somebody's learning or, or about somebody's future? And I think that essentially uh, is the question, how to deal with the uncertain, the limited information we get. And after all, we're doing that most of our life. We're making decisions on the basis of limited information, uh, but we need to, uh, uh, before we make our bets, before we put our money down, before we decide that somebody is going to be admitted to a program, to a university, whatever it is or not, we need to have some idea about, much more idea than we have about the risks involved. Why isn't face validity enough? Um, let, let me answer that by looking at one simple thing that we have a lot of difficulty with, uh, and that is deciding how difficult an item is. If, if you ask a group of teachers to prepare some, let's say, reading comprehension items, um, and then ask them how hard are the questions, and then compare their guesses at how hard the questions are with what happens, most of the time it turns out that uh, we're a long way off in guessing that. That's to say, we don't know what's difficult, whether it's the passage that's difficult, whether it's the question that's difficult, whether it's the experience that this learner had previously, and so on. Given that, then looking at a test and, and looking at what we think is a good, what looks like a valid test, uh, very often we're wrong. And uh, as a result, I think uh, we have to be prepared to spend much more time in in pre-testing, in checking items, in item analysis afterwards, in, in reconsidering the effect of our tests, and in working out to what extent it's reasonable to make inferences from the results. Uh, and generally speaking, we're satisfied with insufficient evidence of that, with, with, with tests that are valid, we'll say, 90% of the time. Well, 
not many people would cross the road if there was a 10% chance of being hit by a car. So w we need to be much more careful in how we use uh, our tests and, and much more careful in checking out the inferences we make from them.